on the road yet yeah, back again and today we're heading back down to non-league it's the national league where we're going to check out what maidstone united has got to offer as they take on eastleigh now these tuesday night kickoffs they're always going to bring traffic traffic and traffic lights even temporary ones now in the previous on the road video we went to Millwall. make sure you go and check that one out and the rest of the on the road playlist after this video now in that video i asked for 3,500 likes you absolutely smashed it you only went and gave me 9k it's what we're going to do we're going to try and beat that we're going to go up a little bit let's go for 9,500. come on smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already click the bell for notifications when a new video comes out and we'll crack on with this video now. So I'm currently in the old manor of Grace. If you're a regular viewer of the On The Road series, you would know that that means I'm going to be picking someone up. As we approach this complex here, I can confirm, well, we're going to get a good look at the bins. Someone's chucked out a washing machine or a tumble dryer or both. It could be a washer dryer. But more importantly, I'm here for a reason. It's to pick up my guest for today. Who's it going to be? Let's find out. Hello there. It's Charlie from Palmy's FC. Oh, I was going to say in German, but I forgot what it was. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Hello. And so we're off to Maidstone, but would you look at this? We bumped into more temporary signals. Screw you. I'm going through this one. Oh dear. But don't worry. It's all good. The one place I did think it would be busy isn't busy is the QE2 bridge. You know, the bridge that takes us from Essex to Kent. It's also the one that costs us £2.50 each way. That's the tolls. Take my money. Following that, Satius Navius is telling us to go on the A229 to Maidstone. And looking at this sign right here, story checks out. Following that, we're on the road to Maidstone. A very dark one. And not long after, civilization. I can see a petrol garage. I need some cash. Let's hope he's got a cash point. Boom. He's got a cash point. Now, we'll be charged 129 for the convenience, but look, I've got no where else to go. Make it rain. In fact, it already is raining. Terrific. Not traffic, but traffic lights. So I found a roundabout and we're going to go straight over because the sign on the right tells me that this is Maidstone United Football Club. And it wasn't lying either. Signs in Maidstone are really helpful. Welcome to the Gallagher Stadium. Whereas we look for a space, this car's reversing. A reversing car when you're looking for a space is never good news. So we're going to chuck at Roger and hopefully there's a parking space down here. Unfortunately, Roger didn't provide and instead we're greeted with many signs basically telling us to piss off. So we did. Back to where we originally were. It looks like parking down there is not a thing. I mean, at the very least, it's provided, but there's no spaces available. As we come back to this roundabout, where are we going to go? Miller and Carter are Obviously, you know, the place that enjoys steak as much as we do, which is why all the beef that they use is premium graded and matured for at least 30 days. More importantly, they've got a car park. Looks like they've got spaces as well. This is promising. Very promising. Look at the space. I'll take this one in front of this very green bush. But just like that, our plan has been butchered. This car park is for customers only. Now, I did consider going in and asking for a table for two as I share a 30 day age Chateau Briand with Charlie. We've only 10 minutes left before kickoff. It's probably best we didn't. Oh, would you look at that? We found a space on the left. Let's park up behind this one here. Lovely. And boom. Ready to go. <laughs> Okay, apparently, despite parking on the left like every other car here, it was me that was blocking the road. I somehow find that hard to believe. I ended up having an argument with some Turkish guy, and I totally regret not keeping the camera rolling. It went a little bit like this. Mehmet knocked on the window and said, you're blocking the road. I said, no, I'm not. He said, the car behind you can't get around you. I said, to be honest, mate, he's up my arse, so he needs to reverse and then go around me. He said, he can't reverse because there's another car behind him. So I said, tell the other car to reverse then. He said, he can't because there's another car behind him. So I said, tell him to reverse so the other car can reverse so the guy behind me can reverse. Mehmet said, there's too many cars back there to keep having this conversation. So I said, tell the too many cars back there to reverse so the other car can reverse so the guy behind me can reverse. Mehmet wasn't having it. He called me a can't. So I said, I can't what? I can't park. He said, no, you're a can't. So I said, you're a can't. Mehmet didn't like that. And he told me the cars can't get down the road and he's going to lose custom. Now, if I mess with Mehmet and his custom anymore, I might be in trouble. I think it's best for everyone that we just move on and I'll try and find a space. There's only five minutes to go before kickoff now. Nice one, Mehmet. You absolute melt. So as we continue to try and find a space here in Maidstone, becoming less and less likely and the roads are getting more and more narrow. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. We're working double time now. Charlie's off out to find a space and now I'm caught in traffic. Things then got serious. I stopped filming and then Googled a car park. Here is said car park. I think we'll just park up right about here. No, that's disabled. And it doesn't look like there's many more spaces. What's going on here? Actually, tell her I found one next to a clothes bank. Now we need to pay. Charlie's got some bad news, though. Public parking only on Saturdays and Sundays. Midweek, Monday to Friday, you have to be a permit holder. Great. Fantastic. Real tip top. We decided to screw it because that was the only available space in Maidstone. If caught, though, we would be given a £60 fine. You know what? On the road is calling. The game has now kicked off. The whole tight Charlie's found something. He's found an indoor car park. He's got a machine to pay and everything. And so I run back to the car. I'm in the car. I look like I'm driving out of here, but I'm going to take a Roger because thanks to Charlie, he has found the car park. <laughs> And would you look at that? I drive in and find myself a space. Lovely jubbly. And so it's out of the car, head to the machine where I whack in the reg and pay. It's that nervous moment where you think, could it decline? Psh, of course not. We're talking about Smith's wallet here. And as you can see, it's now 10 to 8. That means we missed five minutes of this game. And how much was parking? £2.20, please. So the parking in Maidstone, as I say, isn't great. Yellow lines everywhere, even on the steps. And so we're walking. Past Miller and Carter. Screw you and your lettuce wedge. And now we're running. Well, light jog at best. And I didn't want to be put into this position. My ankles could go at any minute. Those that know, of course no. And just like that, we've reached the Gallagher Stadium at the second time of asking. And here's confirmation of that. There we go. We took the Roger and oh, really? <laughs> So we're running again. And for you guys, you've got a question yourself. You spent just over four minutes watching two guys try and park a car near a football stadium. The good news is we did find a space and we did make it to said football ground. It just took a little bit longer than usual. This one's going to cost me £15, £7 for Charlie. What am I going to say? Well, I'm going to say that's £15 spent to watch 75 minutes of Maidstone and Eastleigh. <laughs> 
Boop, boop. And just like that, I've just dropped my ticket and it's stuck to the ground. And Charlie's really struggling to get it. I don't even know if I need it. Do I need it? Probably not. Don't worry about it, Charlie. Oh, he's got it. Of course, given the conditions, he's probably not in the best nick. Let's just let you know there's no alcohol past this point. We don't care. We're hungry. In the past few videos, I have been eating before the game. So here we go again. Onto the Stones Grill. It's going to be a quarter pounder, isn't it? Because I lean over the counter, there is no Dr. Pepper. So there is my quarter pounder with cheese. There's onions too. We're just waiting on Charlie's cheesy chips. But anyway, that's £3.50 so far on food. Here's the sauces, aka condiment. Anyway, Charlie's cheesy chips arrived. And ah, there's um. Might be a little bit of a problem there. I know it's cold, but melt that cheese. Come on. Anyway, Charlie went for the Tommy K mustard combination. It's actually all right. Give it a go. Would you look at that? A football pitch. Would you look at the girth on that flag? Flag girth. The first impressions, it's very, very clean, which is why the pressure is on to make sure this goes in the bin. Anyone out there remember the game Theme Park? Loved it. It reminds me of that. Here's one of the cleaners you put down to make sure it's tidy. Everyone's happy and the ratings are good. So down there, we've got the Genko stand or the Genko stand, whatever you want to call it. On the left, we've got some home support. On the right, there's the Eastleigh fans. They made the trip tonight. Over there, beyond the flag girth, you've got the Manchet facilities stand. Looks like a seated stand. It's nice. And then down here, you've got another terrace stand. How many more times am I going to have to say stand? Oh, there you go. Did I mention it was raining? Normally an issue in non-league, but artificial pitches are great. The games are always on, and you can hire it out throughout the week. Money, money, money. So I can confirm, down this end, justice for shoes is definitely a thing. But to be honest, there's not really much going on in this game at the moment. I'm more interested in this taxi firm who've bagged themselves a fantastic number. And then you've got multitasking Mike. He's on the job eating and holding an umbrella. You know, that really is Britain's Got Talent. Anyway, we're walking. Hello, mate. How you been? As we approached the subs benches, I went on to find a giant scoreboard for those that don't know the score. We didn't. We do now. I also bumped into Dan and Liam, viewers of the On The Road videos. Hello. 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 Now, Dan on the left there said, have you tried the pies? Because you won't get a better one. What, from the Stones Pie Hut? No, I haven't, but I am about to. Charlie's joining me too. And bam, just like that, I've got myself a steak and owl pie. Gym starts next week. That's another £3.50 on food. They've even got a dedicated sweet stool here. I mean, it's, it's getting better and better. As for the game, it's getting worse and worse. It's ups and downs. We're going back up. This pie is fantastic. Daniel Sun was certainly not wrong. Okay, first real action I'm filming from this game. Oh! oh. Oh, what a time. That was you, that. Oh, going down. That is your fault. <laughs> Cut your camera. <laughs> yeah, three minutes into sloppy time of the first half, and that is now half time. Let's go and get some more food. This time we're stepping into an establishment which I'd be proud to call my conservatory. I was joking with the food, by the way. I'm here for a drink. It's cold, so I'm here for some non league hot chocolate. And here is that non league hot chocolate. 60p more than I've expected at £1.60. Let's hope it does the trick. Okay, so it's off to one of the stands. So far, it's been a barrel of laughs. En route to the stand, we bumped into another view of the videos and Maidstone Youth. It's Pete. Hello. Hello. And just like that, the players are back out on the field. The half time music's on point. Deep down in there's confirmation of the score and the Spitfire Lounge is streaming this game. It sounds good, we could get out of this weather, but it looks like we are heading for this stand. And to be honest, we're probably not allowed in the Spitfire Lounge. We're not rappers. <laughs> so as you heard, a little bit of noise. Let's see what this second half brings us. And I think now that we're here, let's do the facts. Name, Maidstone United. Founded, I don't know, is it 1897 or 1992? Let's find out. Either way, it's a big gap. Home ground is the Gallagher Stadium. We're here, which has a total capacity of 4,191, 750 seated. Anything else? Well, I've got a fact for you. The 92. A very popular term amongst ground hoppers. But for the Football League, it was never meant to be the 92. It was meant to be the 94, which consisted of clubs from the Premier League right down to the old Division 3. Now, one of those clubs dropped out straight away. It was Aldershot. They reformed in 1992 and worked their way back up. Now, of course, known as Aldershot Town. Financial difficulties also plagued Maidstone United. Originally formed in 1897, they went exactly the same route as Aldershot. Not long after, the new club was built around youth side Maidstone Invicta. And just like Aldershot, they started making their way up the leagues. It was in 1995 where they changed their name back to Maidstone United. And I bet it's good to be back. Anyway, it's time for my Instagram shot of the night. You can follow me on there. Links are in the description below. I can confirm that Justice for Shoes down this end is not a thing. So a lot of this not dare me to put their comment in the video. Give me a hell yeah in the comments below if you can see your name. And onto the football. Can we get an equaliser? It's a great block. Following that, there's an offside flag. Frustration. Good vibe still intact though. Deal with this corner though. Yeah. Maybe that, along with the rain, has dampened spirits a bit. It's too near Weasley. Just to let you know, someone has farted. And with this game slipping away, it's time to check the scores in the Europa. Hands up if you like the on the road series. Anyone else? No? Just this one? Okay. It's time for the comeback. Okay, how about now? Yep, that just happened. In other news, we found another member of the human ruler family. Straight as a, a ruler. Look at the sass on that flag whip. Here we go. Cross is needed here. Let's try again. Cross is needed here. Right, the referee can't get a decision right at the moment. This lot have had enough. Eventually, they did get a decision. where I say the comeback is on. This 
guy sums it up, and it's about to get worse. <laughs> That's game set and match in this game of non-league football. And the comeback is unlikely, or is it? Unlikely, given we're in the 90th, but never say never, because the Stones are looking for a second. Here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm saying never. And I'll be right, because here is the final whistle. So the time has come to part with Maidstone and the yellow lines. I think it's time we rate this experience. Should we? Let's. Okay, starting off with atmosphere. I mean, well, not much of it. But then, of course, there wasn't much to cheer about, was there? As I always say, the game dictates the atmosphere. And ECD going 3 new up pretty much killed it, didn't it? They tried. And for that, I'm going to give them two stars. Up next, we've got the facilities. I actually really like this ground. It's neat. It's tidy. It's got everything you need. And I fully intend on hooking up with Don Strapsy soon so he can show me the rope so I can get into that Spitfire Lounge. Maidstone United. Nice little ground you got there. It's four stars. Time for the most important one. It's food and drink. And we had plenty of it, didn't we? First of all, my burger. It was right. In fact, it was better than all right. It was way above average. Good cheese, decent onions, and the bun was exactly what you wanted. Now, we'd probably be looking at four and a half stars, minus half a star for no Dr. Pepper. However, we met Daniel Sung and he insisted that we go and try a pie. So I tried the pie, and ladies and gentlemen, it was the best goddamn pie I've ever had at a football match. So much so I couldn't give a crap about the football match. But just so you know, when the food's that good, you don't need Dr. Pepper. Maidstone United, you're only the second club to do it in the series so far. It's five stars for food and drink. If I had a hat, I'd tip it. Finally, we're talking cost. Now, I'm not going to base this on the fact that we spent more, because obviously we did have a little bit more food, didn't we? Did I mention the pie? I think I did. It's more about the individual prices of individual things. Ticket, 15 quid. Pretty standard in the National League. 350 for a cheeseburger. Pretty standard again. 350 for the pie. If I ever go back, I pay a lot more to the man that made that. But then 160 on the chocolate. A little bit more than I expected. But hey, we're talking pennies, aren't we? I have you know I can get hot chocolate elsewhere for a pound. Now, I could have spent a lot more at a football league game. But you get what you pay for. Non-league football. And for that, it's three and a half stars. So where does that put Maidstone in the overall on-the-road standings? I tell you what, it's good. With a better game and better atmosphere, it could have been so much better. In fact, football in Kent is pretty decent, isn't it? Dartford sitting top. Ebbsfleet in third. Maidstone in sixth. We did go jilling them as well, though, didn't we? And I think they're somewhere down here. Yep, there they are. Bottom. It's a shame, but someone has got to be bottom. And unfortunately, on that particular day, it wasn't great for Jill them. It's funny because a lot of people are actually really passionate about the on the road standings. Listen, this will never be official. It's literally my opinion. However, I do feel it is quite a good measure because if clubs can get their facilities, their food and drink, and their costs spot on, then they're going to be sitting high in that table. All they've got to do is turn up on the day, play a good game, and give something for the fans to cheer about. And that final score of atmosphere will be the difference of where they sit. Luckily for Dartford, I caught them on the right day, and that's why they currently sit top. So anyway, we're out of here. Despite the poor performance, fans still applaud the team. It's walked away a little bit more crowded this time. And it's good to know today. I have done the right thing. Charlie never once left my side. Let's get out of here, son. We take a final look at the Gallagher Stadium. We quickly find ourselves back at the car park. Of course, adhering to this pace and back at the car. And so we're out of here. But Maidstone, it was fun. The turnaround story from 1992 is an inspiring one for all football clubs in the lower leagues. And of course, those that aspire to get on the ladder. I often think about my own Sunday side, Palmer's FC. It's one that films its games and puts it on the internet for everyone to see. Could they ever make this jump? Would they ever make this jump? Well, I'd need investment and a lot of help behind the scenes. But never say never. Although I did earlier, didn't I? But never say never. If you're not familiar with the Palmer's FC channel, go and check it out. You might just enjoy it. Anyway, we're on the road. Yep, back again. And this is where I'm going to end this video. Thank you to everyone for their support on this channel. It's much appreciated. If you're new to it, please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications for when I bring a new video out. Share it out as well. And don't forget, let's see if we can smash that like target. Until then, though, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.